of this one is uh, to look for sources of funding um, that are non-government, non-NASA. So the first rule of this panel is you can't say NASA or government. Like, oh, well, there's a fringe side of NASA that could give us funding. No. No government, no NASA. We're looking for something to make it so that the, uh, the eggs aren't in one very rickety basket that is the government. We want to put the eggs in all sorts of little places. Even if one place only gives you, say, $5,000, $25,000, $100,000, or a million dollars, whatever level they give you, you get enough of them and then you start to equal what one giant government fund can do. Um, and in a lot of ways people think, oh well, it's so much more complicated, we could just get one thing from this one source and look how much easier I'm. Like, yes, but the source you're dealing with is very complicated, so we want to find a bunch of easier, more fun sources. So the first thing I wanted to do was ask um, where everybody works. And if you work at a space company, think of maybe where your spouse or your sister or brother or something works that you're connected to that's not a space company. Sorry. Oh, I would get my Okay. Where was that? North. North Carolina. Starbucks. Starbucks, all right. Hey, that's, you'd be surprised. They're very good down here. Um, I'm a student right now, but. Well, what's the school? I guess it won't be true. Okay. Okay. Going. Going. Alright, well, what would be something that's the, well, you're related to? Anybody in your family work somewhere else? Um, my wife works there too. Uh, <laughs> my brother is self-employed. Applying for more than IBM right now. People <laughs> yesterday going to Boston. But uh, you're looking for a non-space X, yes. non-space non related non-space company that you're associated. with. Somehow IBM is the closest. Favorite. IBM, I guess. Okay, IBM. Non, think about you say work? a non-space company that you're connected to, either by your spouse, your, because you work for SpaceX, your so that doesn't count. <laughs> your brother. Your brother, parents. Uh, well, dad. Yeah, uh, Google. Huh? Google. Google, okay. Um, I work as a software center. Okay, software. Intuit. Intuit. Background. Some company that you're associated with by like relation or something that's not space related. Yeah. No, you one of those. Google, Google. okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Express. <laughs> so, my first idea is that in a lot of the fundraising I've done, is we go to these companies that we have an emotional connection with through ourselves, a spouse, you know, you've done a lot of work with them, something like that, and you ask them and their donations department, um, their philanthropic department, to get involved in something you're interested in. Because with a lot of these companies, they have a ton of money that they have to offload. Because if they don't, their tax rate is a lot higher. They're kind of like, well, where should we offload it? And a lot of them turn to their employees to ask. So you go to all these com companies, IBM, Google, even Starbucks, which has a huge philanthropic department, and say, hey, you got a little money? I want you to invest it in X, Y, and Z space company instead of, say, investing it in, uh, you know, what one of their normal sources. So that was my first idea. Mike, what's your? So like, like uh, the philanthropic, like. Like the donations or uh, investing department of a company, whatever. The part of the company that needs to offload money to decrease their tax uh, problems. <laughs> So usually, um, most companies have certain like requirements for that, like they, you know, only invest in nonprofit organizations, or they want to invest in education or the environment or something. So, I don't know if you have any well, the, most of those companies, yeah, the nonprofit thing is a, a thing. A, you have to find the part of the department that can do it more investing, less donation, um, which most of them have. Um, but the thing is, most of those companies, the idea that they came up with is like, they say, hey, we, we support Habitat for Humanity, or we're an edu we support education. Most of the time, they got to that end point because somebody in their corporation was like, that's what I care about, so I want my company to do that. So if enough people in the company start saying, okay, we, we think that's cool, keep donating over there, but we now care about this too. You can sometimes change the course of where their donations go, because Really, most of these companies pick that. There's a million things they could pick, and they, so they just ask, what do, you, what do you want to donate to? 
And there are, in space, a lot of nonprofits you can donate to. Um, there's the National Space Society, there's the Space Frontier Foundation, even Space Up is largely a nonprofit. Um, the AIAA. So those are another options where if you give money to them, then you get the nonprofit tax write up, and the AIAA can then choose to either use it for space education or investing or prizes. The Space Frontier Foundation takes in money, and we put on the New Space Business Plan prize. We just awarded $25,000 to Altius. So there are ways to go around it. You just have to look like, okay, what does my company need? My company wants to donate to a nonprofit? Let's find a space nonprofit. So, so one thing that I run across a lot in Silicon Valley is you've got you've got the angels who are um, they're emotionally invested in what it is they're trying to do. They're excited about the idea, you know. They've got big starry eyes and dreams about what it is that you're doing. And then you got the venture capitalists who come in usually later on, and they're not really interested in so much in how exciting the idea is, but they're they're all about the numbers. Um, so those are two groups that I think uh, would really uh, be interested in putting some money in the space. Are there any space focused um, like angel groups or the C? Yeah, there's the Space Spain. Angels Network. How is that called? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe David has something about that. Are you together about the Space Angels? Yeah, there's a Space Angels Network. I think he's zoned out. Or he's zoned out. Yeah, there's a Space Angels Network, and they put on the um, Space Investment Summit every year, the SIS. So that's another good place to go. Um, if you have connections to VCs that you want to encourage to go into space as opposed to going into software or whatever else, um, that's one place to bring them. And another thing is to start you know, reminding those VCs that you know, this is actually a profitable venture. I know it's a little bit more long term than a lot of what they look at, but uh, it will eventually be large, very, very profitable. What's the name that it's a... The Angel Group. Space Angels Network? Yeah, Space Angels Network. And you look at Google. I mean, Google basically took over one of the X Prizes, and now they're the Google Lunar X Prize. So maybe you could have your company do the, uh, you know, Starbucks Lunar X, Starbucks Mars X Prize. <laughs> or, you know, the IBM Asteroid X Prize. So there's, you know, you just have to think creatively about where we can. Sources. So there's this model, uh, I can't remember the name, and maybe somebody can help me, like, uh, what it, there's this uh, business model out there where, because most angels and VCs are looking for a short-term exit, like, between, you know, uh, usually they'll, they'll put down their thing, like, exit strategy in five years, right, which is way too short for some of the stuff that we're doing. But um, Nokia, for example, who, uh, you know, as a side note, was a food company, uh, that, that's how they started, doing rubber boots. Um, they've actually embraced this model where they find companies where it's looking at a 10 to 15 year um, outcome and they just they put a little bit of seed money in there and they don't know what they're going to do with this but the hope is that eventually it's going to turn into something that they'll use. I can't, I, is it, has anyone heard of this? Like, there's a, I, I remember listening to the talk at Stanford and then I forgot what the model was. No. Somebody Wikipedia there. <laughs> um, Another thing that's big is the Kickstarter programs. You know, if you have a small startup, I mean, this is obviously not on the building large, giant, atlas five size rockets, but this is the, you know, if you have a small hacker startup for space, like Celestial Circuits and um, the smaller ones, then launching something like a Kickstarter campaign is a great way to get that over that first little hump. Okay, so here's an idea. It's really out there. I just <laughs> thought of it at lunch, but it, it's big. Um, and I thought of this talking about Richard Branson and his island, pirates, um, tax evasion, oh, money is fake, is all these eggs. Well, let's not just look at all these eggs. Let's look at the basket we're going to put them in. And so that would lead to, um, I guess, an international interplanetary type of currency or stock and community that could do deep space missions. That you could do like stuff. penny stocks for intergalactic travel. Well, I'm not, uh, well I, I guess stocks is kind of like the same sort of where I'm thinking, but more like it is, since money is so fake, 
why don't we just create a new currency? <laughs> so you're thinking like mi microfinancing? No, like interplanetary, uh, macro. Well, so the, the analog would be like uh, second uh, life, right? What? Second life, right. you can exchange money, real money for uh, base money and build your enterprise there in the virtual world. Well, kind of. It's just and have somebody um, 3D printed for you. I, I guess it's it's pretty out there, and I haven't really had much time to think about it because I just thought about it in PR as not one. Um, but uh, but I think there could be a possibility there with just um, I, I mean basically the whole thing about money is people just need to believe it that it has value, right? I mean these one dollar bills are just pieces of paper. You know, so it's a matter of just having people believe that it's real and getting enough people on board like that and pulling together, I guess, it would be essentially the space community across the globe and all these different companies um, working together to have a common mission and goal, which is going to be important to tie everything together, to have that common goal. And go from there. I mean. <laughs> so what, what would the value be to somebody who's, because in, in uh, in Second Life, for example, it's the reputation that they get for having this amazing, you know, um, non-first life. <laughs> what what um, is Second Life? It's like, uh, it's like an online so world you live in. Imagine Farmville, oh, okay. right? Oh, okay, so that's where you pay real money to buy fake money on this internet thing. Yeah. Right, yeah, there are places doing that. It's basically the same idea, kind of. But, um, but for them, there's a, there's, a, there's a value, right? They're getting something for an exchange. So what are they bartering? Yeah. Well... The, the thing is, um, there are so many different disciplines that could go into, or that does go into, like, colonizing Mars or deep space travel. And so even having things like the agriculture people developing these fruits and vegetables and things to eat.